Hey, it's Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. The installation of ceiling fan fixtures is one of the most commonly requested items at Jefferson Electric from our customers. I'm going to walk you through pricing, step-by-step -step installation guide, materials, tools, and you're going to feel confident at the end of this video doing it yourself. Let's take a look. Hey, 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 guten tag to our German electrician friends out there. It's Joel Walsman. Today we're at Tim's house. You've met Tim before, and Tim's looking to add a little culture to his front porch. Yeah. What are we looking at? So, one of the selling points for this house, and I know we've spent extensive time in this house. You rewired it, we talked the inspection and all that. It's a 1915 home, right? Yeah. We needed everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's got a ton of work. The next stage is the porch. We love it as space, it's nice and wide. Uh, but it gets hot, especially with all this direct sunlight in the morning. Uh, so we're hoping to just install a ceiling fan on that half for general living space and climate control. Perfect. You rounded up some basic materials. I've got a few tools here, shouldn't take much. Let's take a look at the inside and what it's gonna take to execute the job. So here's the space, really just this half of the porch is what we're thinking we'll use. The other half will be for maybe kids' bikes or something in the future whatever but we think probably like a love seat here and then chairs or another couch love seat and then table in the middle so then probably ceiling fan right above that space we might be able to just center it with the porch i don't know if we necessarily need the furniture and then i assumed we could tie into there's a receptacle kind of right inside that wall or there's the reset recess lighting. I don't know which one would be better, but. Okay, perfect. And I'm seeing one thing real quick. There are two potential visual reference points. I want you to be happy. What's your dominant visual reference point? Is it brick to house or is it header to house? How do you mm. want to center up left to right? Let's go header to house. Header to house and center on the window? Yes, that should be perfect. So this is the porch wall right here. Mm -hmm. We've got opportunity. We really can't come off the cans because that's a switched lighting source. Right. And we need a constant hot to the ceiling fan. So <clears throat> my thought process here, if you're okay with this, is that we probe both from the receptacle up the wall, just fish it, see what we get. And from the switch up, I like the receptacle better because it's almost direct in line with our, mm -hmm. our target. Um, but let's move some furniture, identify the circuits turn them off so we can work safely. Great. And uh, we'll see what opportunity there is. Great. It's time to identify our circuit. We're gonna turn this off and fish up from here to see what opportunity there is. I've got 123.7 volts on my Kiwi's HT118A. I think this is a pretty decent kind of do-it-yourself multimeter that's going to give you a ton of functionality. I mean expanded functionality in an extremely cost-effective package. So let's find the breaker and flip it off. All right, Tim, I got trusty Kiwi's. What you got for me? Boom. That's it. Nailed it, bro. All right, let's take this thing apart. All right, power's off in the basement. Let's see what we got. So Joel, that was a 15 amp breaker. So right, 15 amp circuit. Is a fan okay to go on that or how? It's like a motor, right? That would be a pretty heavy load or not necessarily? You're right, good question. <clears throat> and you're asking the right question. So this house being just rewired is in a totally different ballgame than when it was 1915. And so what we've got is obviously lights and receptacles are on a separated circuit. The fan, and I haven't even unboxed it yet. Do you know if it has a light kit? I don't. Okay, well the fan itself is probably about a half an amp load when it's on high. So it's 1 30th of the overall circuit capacity. Okay. So you're right, like motors have such a reputation for being these massive high draw units, but a ceiling fan, half amp is a pretty good rule of thumb. It's nice we've got a remodel box so we can pop this out. Send some fish sticks up the wall. I've got highly flexible fish sticks which is nice from the standpoint, they'll make that turn and head the wall, but they're not gonna push as hard or as far through the insulation. And we do have insulation. If we had a light kit on the fan, <clears throat> let's say three LED light bulbs. Yes, light kit. Light kit, it's just an, another fraction of an amp. Even back in the old incandescent day, you know, with kind of yesterday's technology, you'd be at an amp and a half max. 
So, given the age of the home, I'm highly suspicious that we've got a fire block right about there. Um, I'm hitting something now, but that <clears throat> could be anything. So we'll keep exploring, get a sense as to how far up the wall we are by using a piece of tape to mark that location right there. And then that'll... <clears throat> So Tim, are you willing for us to poke holes in the wall? Yeah. Let's One, see. maybe two, and then patch and repair. Yeah. Your wife's expectations are aligned. Okay, that's all that matters. We're, we're good. So if you're gonna rip apart a customer's living room, take a picture before you do so you can put it back together. Fortunately, I've got the authority right here. Um, but man, picture's worth a thousand words so you get the present state of the job and then capture the final state as well. We use an app called Company Cam. It's worth its weight in gold. It's 12 bucks per user per month. Fantastic investment in CYOB and ooh, it's pretty solid right there. <laughs> so we could use a flex bit. That's a 54 inch long flexible steel bit. We could cram it because we don't have a great angle of entry. We could cram it up the wall and risk actually punching out the back side of the wall or the front side of the wall. There's not a lot of control and visibility. I've got a boroscope that we can use just to verify what we're finding here. And uh, we'll do that. <clears throat> but it's pretty conclusive at this point, I think. Okay, we have got the boroscope set up here. Klein's boroscope is only, it's less than a hundred bucks. Um, it feels incredibly durable, like any Klein product. And it's worth its weight in pure gold when you consider the offset and patch and repair. And one, when you patch and repair a wall, right, you're gonna be at 150 bucks plus for the drywall or plaster. And then you've got to paint a lot of times edge to edge because your touch-up paint's not match. Shearing it for another 300 bucks plus appointment setting, disruptions, dust off the end. All right, let's try to get up this wall here and just confirm our suspicions. It's completely dark. Time to turn on the light. There's a low setting and a high setting. Let's see what we got. With the insulation, it could be that the image is so awful. We won't be able to see a lot. It's about a six foot lead on this baby. Oh, okay. Running up along the side of the stud there. Not pointing the direction I want to be pointing. More insulation. Bam, there it is. Yep. So that's a fire block right there. And that is a horizontal full dimension two by four that fills, it's laid uh, flat and it fills the entire cavity. And right there let's just check that dimension I've got my thumb on here as a marker see if that matches up with my fish sticks mm, yeah I'm gonna say yeah because that was bent over so pretty close time to cut it takes a little bit of nerve as a, an apprentice electrician to be like wait for the first time, I'm actually gonna cut a hole in somebody's wall. Like seriously, you want me to do I'm like, yeah, yeah, go ahead and do that. I can remember that feeling of like, this isn't right. Mom never let me do that, but guess what? I'm not 19 anymore. Woo! Turn down the speed, carbide hole saw is advised. Actually, my mandrel's a bit shy. It's gonna bounce around on me. See that? See how my mandrel is barely sticking past my carbide hole saw? That means I'm not gonna get good grab in the wall. And then when the teeth bite, it's gonna bounce around. I'm gonna make a big slurry. So let's put the drill in the lock position and correct that. All right, now that I've added a quarter inch to my mandrel by sliding it out, I've got my mark on the wall. My stud is on the left, so I wanna be hugging just to the right. And I'm gonna go above the two by four so that I've got a good angle to come down through the fire block. I've got an easy opening right there. So I'll be able to send the fish sticks from this point down into that box. 
See, if I'm right on the fire block, it's actually hard to get through it. I've got to oscillate out the front, put a nail plate on it. Um, so I'm, I'm intentionally above. And to the right, here goes. Low speed, less dust as far as thrown about. And then nice and easy, because you know what you're gonna find in the wall, those wires might be coming right up here. In this case, I think they go down, but it might be going straight up and you've gotta make sure you don't just slice into. There it is, there's the fire block. It's right, right at the top. Okay, we've got the extension on the drill bit, because the last thing you want is the drill driving its, you know, a groove down the wall as the self-heating auger bit engages that old hardwood. Do you not want a 90 degree guy? A lot of times you don't have enough, that's, that's a great question, 90 degree bit. You don't have enough operating depth to get it in there, set to the right depth to engage the wood, and then you bottom out on the, so you really have to drive at an angle, but having a longer bit gives you a better angle at which to drive. So be mindful that we want to enter just front of center and end up just off of center, so that wire is in the center of that fire block. So I'm just feeling around with a bit. All right, no known obstructions, here we go. Ooh, brutal. Whew. That's why you keep a handle on your drill so it doesn't smack the wall or your nose. Yeah, hoping I can get through it. Oh, there it is. It's right there. See uh, a bit of that size, that's like an inch and five eighths. It's pretty aggressive, so you're gonna get a lot of torque. All right, you put a, a hook on the end of your fish stick, that might help it drive through the insulation. I don't expect having any great difficulty. Famous last words. Okay, we are probably there. Yep, just saw it. That's one nice thing about a flexible, flexible fish stick is, tell me if you need me to pull it back. It's gonna make the bends real well. Okay, beautiful. Phase one is complete. Let's put some more fish sticks together and see what we encounter for phase two. I'm gonna tape off the head so that it doesn't catch because I don't want it to snag on something such that I can't retrieve it from the wall. I just want a smooth push as I'm exploring. So that rounded head is gonna be much less likely to um, bind in a crack someplace. Okay, so the next dimension we need is the height of the ceiling on the front porch relative to the interior. All right, so off the door frame, we're at four inches and we are at 22. So we have an 18 inch delta where if we exit, we'll be above the porch ceiling. Now I am suspicious of one thing. I bet there's an original wood ceiling in there. And I know these old houses, so there's probably, um, cracked and peeling pretty bad, so it had that vinyl overlay. So I'm gonna reduce that dimension by about an inch and a half. So instead of 18, let's call it 16 and a half. So if we exit in that space, we're gonna be above the ceiling. <clears throat> so let's mark this. And we'll probe around a little bit more, see what we encounter. to the right. You never know when you're gonna encounter just some little bit of stray blocking. All right, it's binding right there again. The good news is, look at that. We're at the top plate of this wall. It's likely that we've got an opening in an older home like this right out onto the front porch. So <clears throat> where we wanted to go next is outside, find our visual center, bore our four in an eighth inch hole through the porch ceiling and then try to fish back to this location and grab that hook. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. Hopefully we don't have to make another hole if we do. Patch and repairs on the table regardless at this point. Hey, hey, I wanna point out to you real quick the tools I used to accomplish this project. Got my electrician screwdriver. I've got my large flathead Phillips Small flathead, 3 sixteenths, and a number one square drive that did the trick for me. Got my wire strippers, utility knife, 
for stripping the outer jacket of my cable. I did a couple of times use my small linemans. And then <clears throat> hole saw, carbide hole saw for cutting the plaster inside with a mandrel and pilot bit. Wood hole saw for a nice clean cut on the front porch. I love the Lennox brand. I've got my impacts with a couple of extensions and a Phillips bit. Helped me out when it came time to mount the fan. My DeWalt 20 volt XR with a handle, extension, and a drill bit to navigate the framing obstacles inside. My Kiwi's tester to verify the work. Boom! Applying tape measure for finding center on ceiling. Maxi Flex gloves, love those things. And the CC laser level. It is nuts. It's like all encompassing for a very reasonable price. And let me introduce you to the very small family of materials that we're gonna use to execute this very simple project. We've got 100 feet of 14-2 indoor building wire. I had the luxury of Tim identifying the circuit ahead of time so we knew our wire gauge. If you didn't know that, you might end up on a 12 gauge circuit and the last thing you wanna do is another run to the hardware store. So a little front end preparation pays big time. 100 feet is plenty. This is also called Romex. I'm sure Sarah Wire would uh, resent me calling it that. We've got a remodel fan bracket. See, that's a fan rated remodel box that's supported by a retrofit bracket. So I'm not gonna have to do any damage to the ceiling in order to support this fan. If I'm just off the side of framing, then I'll be able to use this box, which secures via these three screws as designed through the side of the box with this beefy mounting bracket. If I'm right on framing, I'm gonna use a half inch pancake box and that's gonna put me spot on and I can secure through the box and then wire connectors on each side at the outlet. I'm gonna have three pigtails, and at the fan, I'm gonna have three pigtails, so I'm utilizing these lever connectors super easy. There's a strip gauge on them. You open it up, you slide your stripped wire in, you snap it closed, no bare conductor, done. Now let's take a look at the fan itself. Inlight graciously provided this fixture to us. We've got another video on a separate fixture. Check the link. That's cool. Now this fan is probably, I'm gonna say a little bit different than any fan I've put up. Just a different design, so I don't know what to expect yet. Let's pull that aside, keep it safe. We've got our fan parts. There's an, uh, you know what, I love this. I love this, let me tell you what I love about this. I love the fact that the canopy is so large because that's very gracious to an electrician to hide any slop that may be created in the ceiling when we're drilling the holes. Sometimes they're so tight, they won't even cover the box and the cutout itself, and you're fighting it, that is a plus right there. It's just a plus for a beautiful finished product. It has bulbs. That's a plus, thanks guys. Okay, there's the fan motor. I like it, it's got a safety cable, it's cool. Never had to rely on a safety cable yet, but not about to start. But I will connect it. Ooh, what is this? That's probably like a decorative ring for the top. Lots of parts, get them all out here. Beautiful. Here's our down rod, fan blades. Yeah, look at that. Have you ever seen a fan blade with that shape? One thing you wanna be mindful of when you're installing a fan outdoors, it needs to be outdoor rated. If it's not, then the blades are gonna droop. They're gonna be that composite material and they're gonna droop and it's look like, it'll look like a wet noodle in a matter of months. Cool, light kit. Remote control, see that's what's gonna enable us to hardwire it hot, is that remote control. Mounting anchors for the remote. Wire connectors, usually undersized. Batteries, thank you. Remote receiver, I'll show you how to make that up. Cool, make sure we get the parts in the right order. I like seeing the, the, the vertical breakdown right there. That image right there is real helpful. The leads are labeled, look at that beautiful for light, for light, two motor, two motor, two motor, probably for multi-speed, 
AC in, hot, neutral, and ground. All right. After conversing with Tim a little bit more, and I think you're re you'll resonate with this, we decided that the visual reference point was actually the window, this opening that's created between the column and the house and not the header. Visual reference point, those are keywords. When you communicate with a customer like that, they're like, oh, you're right, or your wife. She's like, that, oh, that's not, ooh, yeah. You know, it's that little bit of um, conversational leverage that's legitimate and that you're looking for. Steer things in an aesthetically pleasing direction. So we're just gonna measure the center but Prentice 101, how to use a tape measure. Okay, 102 and three quarter. I don't know that we need to label 103. Getting around that trim. 103. Um, so half of that is 51 and a half. So I'm gonna bump my CC over. Let it simmer down a bit. Let's double check that. 51 and a half is our target. I don't have to put any marks on the ceiling until I'm ready. And then we want to be center on that window too, which will bring that dimension right off the header. So that's 37 and a half. Um, and half of that is 18 and three quarter. <coughs> so 18 and three quarter is right there. Off the header is 58 and one quarter. Transfer that 58 and a quarter. Easy. Still too much. 58 and a quarter. 51 and a half. All right, there's our mark. As long as I don't bump that or obstruct the laser, we're spot on. I have to say, I'm super impressed with this CC laser level. I'm gonna drop a link in the description. It's an all-inclusive set, easy to operate, and I can't imagine a component that it doesn't come with, as well as two USB-C rechargeable batteries. Yeah, so this target plate has a reflective backing and allows the laser to show up much, much better at greater distances in outdoor ambient light. All right, one thing I like to do is use this 3 16th by 12 exploratory bit so I know what I'm getting into. You see, it might be that I can move it over a half inch and avoid using that pancake box. The pancake box is a little bit more fastidious, being a half inch deep, there's not a lot of wire space in it. So I'm just gonna see what I find first. All right, it's time to explore just a little bit further. I got nothing in any direction. I'm gonna check a little further here. But what that tells me is I'm using the remodel fan bracket and that's cool, that's fine. Let's do it. I'm feeling confident. I've moved my laser level to safety. It's like 200 bucks, so I'm not taking any chances there. And I'm ready to bore the ceiling. Okay, here's one dynamic, right? <clears throat> that little hole doesn't hold my mandrel bit real tight, and yet the vinyl's getting a lot of bounce to it, and so the risk is then I'm gonna end up with a really sloppy cut. So instead of this carbide hole saw, I'm gonna go ahead and transition over to a much finer tooth hole saw so I can just butter through that, just a brand new sharp hole saw, because um, the last thing I wanna do is that vinyl in this kind of cooler weather to get a big crack out of it or something. So. I'm just gonna take it easy. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And, and I love this quote, every piece of art begins with philosophy. But isn't that true of all of life? Everything you do, every morning you wake up, you either do or do not have philosophy in mind. And in fact, I would argue that you do, you just don't recognize it some days. And when that philosophy is front of mind and it's intentional and purpose-driven, then you're bound to better outcomes. So let's get a hole saw. That's the Lennox hole saw of choice right there. The, the butter ball, here it goes. 
Come on. All right, all right. Beautiful. Low speed, low force, patient pull. My battery's getting weak here. Let's see if it'll get through. There it is. All right, beautiful. The framing is pretty far apart. We'll see if our remodel fan bracket is up to the challenge. Let's boroscope this baby and see if we can see our fish sticks inside the wall right there. It's nice being surgical, taking, you know, 15, 20 extra minutes, knowing you're saving someone else time. You know, homeowners see that, that effort, they applaud it. What's the care they want to see in other parts of the home for the next job? But yeah, I'm really not seeing anything right now. Part of that is it's a hip roof on the front porch, so the roof line comes down. So we're looking at a pretty small target by the time you've got this ceiling framing and the rafter framing. You've just got a narrow window to hit over there. Let's get some brighter light, and that's what I need. So what I did is I stuck my whole DeWalt flashlight up there and I've got a lot more light and now I can finally see what I'm seeing. Okay, we determined. Boroscope wasn't gonna save us a whole. It was a fun exercise. We tried and that's a good thing. That's exactly what you wanna to communicate to your wife, your homeowner, whoever's a stakeholder and how many holes end up getting drilled in the living room wall. Um, but what we know is the outdoor porch ceiling is at about this elevation. We're gonna drill here. We've su successfully fished up to this point so we'll probably have to go through the wall and then potentially through siding material. Pulling that fish stick down out of the wall so we don't catch it and rip it up. And we're just gonna go straight up from that hole through the wall. Here we go. Okay. So that's why we weren't seeing it. There's sheathing right here. So that's what we needed to do. I'm gonna tuck that insulation out of the way, put an extension on my hole saw, and uh, but drill a smaller hole. We don't need this full size. Now I've got my longer bit. I'm gonna go through my subsiding. Whenever there's more material than expected, stop and check, because what you might be doing is punching out just above the roof line or something goofy. So now my job, is to dial that fish stick right in and make it come out of that hole without hopefully not too much effort. All right. I'm trying to take a peek in this dark hole. <clears throat> I see the DeWalt light that's up there. I'm trying to head that direction. I think Tim's trying to holler at me. And I'm going too far to the north. Nope, you can just grab it and pull it over to your side i'll give you you're also you're super the end of the deep. wire and the tape if i just push is it going to refeed um let me am I gonna lose it? let me put uh, these four more sections on so that we're not at risk of losing it yeah oh okay here i'll pull slowly you tell me when to stop okay all right Pull it out, take what you need. All right, I've taken off all the excess lengths of fish stick. I'm gonna add it on right there, just that one section. I'm gonna pull it out. Just so be careful when you twist fish sticks, twist them to the right, unless you want them to come off and detached. And you can go to the left, I suppose. All right, we'll get that insulation put back. But first, let's take off the excess. So Tim, you mentioned, <clears throat> I thought that was interesting insight that a couple of the things that intimidated you about this project was um, just penetrating the exterior of the home, both, both the porch ceiling and um, yeah. the side here, just like water, you know, yeah. codes, rules, and like, you just get into a lot more. Yes. Right, so. Yeah, thanks. 
So that's interesting. I've got some fire caulk on a stick that would be able to putty in a couple of these holes like this fire block and then that one as well. And that's just going to pose a, an all purpose sealant. Now that we have the wire through the wall, let's take a look at making our electrical connections, installing the fan and the fit and finish details that really set a project apart. <coughs> so here's a pro tip. As soon as you know you need your plaster guy, give him a call because you never know when he's going to take another call and be booked out two weeks more. And the last thing you want your customer doing is sitting here watching TV, looking at the holes you drilled that are four weeks still unpatched. Okay, so I did a couple of things. One, I sent Jose a picture of the entire area so he's got a concept for what, what size ladder, etc. Two, I sent him a picture of the texture so he can bring the right brushes, he knows what he's matching. And then three, just a picture of the holes and the size holes. And what we're gonna do is we're going to save the plugs. So as soon as I put fire putty in this hole and in that hole, put the insulation back, then I'm sticking the plugs in the wall. We're um, making our electrical connections and working our way outside. I have a stick of fire caulk. You can buy this for about 15, 20 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. And the nice thing is you just cut off a little bit of what you need and use that. You do wanna wear gloves. This stuff will really get into your skin. All right, that fire barrier putty is nice. You might be tempted to use my good old friend duck seal, but that would not be the right, this would not be the right application for that product. Thanks, Ted. But check out that, uh, what I like about this is it stays malleable, so you keep it in your bag and you plug one, two holes at a time, as opposed to cutting a fire tube, fire cock tube open and having that the whole thing go bad. And those things are like 14 bucks now. They're not, not cheap, particularly if you need the red stuff, which is a two hour barrier, I believe. One tip about fire cock is you wanna stick it in a hole around the perimeter, the entire perimeter of every cable in that hole. All right, that's the full extent of our responsibility on those holes. Now it's time for the all important electrical connections. Outlets are equipped with what's called backstabs. I personally hate backstabs. Super, super convenient to just strip it, tuck it, but it's not a great quality connection. The last thing I want to do is have a callback. So I'm going to actually cut each conductor with at least three inches, a total of six common misunderstanding. Total of six inches required from where it enters the box, minimum of three inches required from where it exits the box, the plane of the face of the box. So I'm going to be cutting these conductors right here and pigtailing them with my three-way wagos. Tug test. One of the things you want to pay attention to is box fill. Um, every box is stamped with its cubic capacity. And in this case, we are fortunate enough to have a box that will handle, without having to make a trade, a box that will handle this capacity. So because I've got a hot pass through, I am combining all my, that uh, could have been better. We're combining all of my uh, whites together, blacks together, and then grounds, also common under one connector. So there it is, whites with a tug test. And if you're a DIYer, these lever nut connectors are a very low skill, easy connector. You can get them for under 40 cents a piece. So now we've got our electrical connections. The last and most important thing here, beside the quality of connection, is to make sure that ground gets tucked away and doesn't come into contact with any of these bare terminals on the side of the receptacle. 
two silly questions. Should I have wrapped electrical tape around that outlet? Well, first of all, don't shit on me. <laughs> Second of all, no, it's not a code requirement. Some people, it makes them feel more comfortable that they're not gonna get the accidental contact. I mean, the wires inside the wall will move microns, you know, fractions of a millimeter. However, they won't move three quarters of an inch. So I'm confident that we've got a good connection that that's gonna last. And then the second silly question is what orientation should my screws be in? It's totally up to me, but I'd like to match what's existing in the house. Are we vertical or horizontal? Horizontal, so I'm just gonna back it off, boom. There's that little bit of fit and finish that homeowners notice, particularly at the switch plates. When you've got a four gang switch plate and all the screws are the same orientation, they're like, that's what I'm looking for in an electrician. So it's a wrap here. Let's pop outside and keep rocking. So what is this bracket? This is the almighty fan remodel bracket and it's exactly what we need. See, it's got these effectively fasteners and it's compression oriented. So the fasteners are going to compress into the framing on each end as with my hand through the hole, I reach up and I twist this bracket. And as I go lefty loosey, it expands and it's gonna end up filling the joist space, assuming it's not too, too wide. Framing dimensions are gonna be compliant. So I'm just gonna spin that and see how it grows until finally it compresses and holds on both ends. So it's time consuming to do that through a hole. So I'm gonna take a rough dimension of my framing spacing and then I'm gonna get that almost to that same dimension and then I'll just have to finish it off through the hole because I'll be working like this, you know. So let's take a look, let's get it in. I'm Thomas W. Right. Yep, boom. Let me go back Ready? just a just a smerge. Okay, so now it's a matter of getting this thing in there. These feet will flop around on you, so you really wanna get them, making sure they're sitting flat on the surface, like that. Pretty cool. Get my light out of there first, hello. <sighs> Many a good flashlight has been lost by an ungrateful apprentice electrician in a ceiling. In grates. Boom, thank you sir. So in the specs on the fan bracket, it does say very clearly that 24 inch span, a fixture has like a 50 pound rating and a fan has a 35 pound rating. So we definitely want to respect that. And thankfully we're at a 18.74 pound fan. Coming into view here, had to tighten it up just a little bit. Get my feet back where they belong, that's good. Flip this over, that's good. All right, now the, the, the last pro tip I really have for you here is to dial it in center of hole. If you're just a little off the hole, right when you put that box on, you'll be like, no, and you'll be loosening it all back up, recentering. So go center on hole, and that's just your best eyeball center. You check, no movement, other than just tightening into place. This is a bit of a forearm workout. You can only turn in like 16ths of a rotation, and it starts to resist pretty hard. If you're really like boss mode and just crank this thing down, uh, in a drywall ceiling, those joists will expand on you and you will have nail pops in the ceiling. I've never done it, but I'm confident it could happen. All right, that's why they give you the expanded holes and I'm gonna have to use them. I didn't think I'd encounter that much resistance. What I'm gonna do is start two screws in the opposite corners. That'll then just slip right on. There it is. Took a little bit more force to get that started. Okay, I just did it the way they prescribed. Get those opposite corners in first. Utilizing the enlarged holes they provide. Okay. I'm gonna ground our box. It's also important, just take it and wrap it around there. Let's get our fan up. The one thing about fans is you just have so many little screws to put together. If you're um, just the portion for the homeowner, right, just the portion of this job of installing the ceiling fan, you need to be up over a hundred bucks for sure. Um, typically, homeowner's gonna supply the fan. You're gonna install it. You're gonna have a couple basic questions. Which fan blades do you want up? The white side or the wood side? Do um, you want the short down rod or the long down rod? Would you like to use the remote that's supplied in the package? All of those are front end questions before that homeowner 
takes off for work. So you're gonna be about 125 bucks for a basic fan. You're probably gonna be, uh, if you've got a vaulted ceiling, if you've got a six foot down rod, if you um, need to supply a balancing kit on a six foot down rod, or three balancing kits to really get that thing to butter and you're up and down off the ladder, you might be 350 bucks just for the installation of the fan itself. In the wiring portion, you're probably um, giving up over half a day so you've got to calculate accordingly. It's a small job, you look the homeowner straight in the face and you give them that budget number that they need to expect. Well, it'll be about 125 to put the fan up and around six to 800 for the remainder of the work. Are we still on the same page and is it worth having me write this out for you? You need to say it right there when you're in person where they can see the sincerity of your speech. You're not hiding behind the keyboard, jacking up numbers, yanking them around and you need to get their verbal approval that, yeah, that seems about like what we budgeted. I like where we're going with this. Let's, let's proceed. No loose screws on the ceiling fan. It's gonna wobble. Get those things tightened down just by hand. If you impact and wrench them right off, you're gonna regret it. Although I am told the impacts these days are butter, quote unquote. All right, it's time to get the proper sequence here. Get this whole thing dialed up. And one thing that I always do is tape up my leads here. See how that's gonna uh, flow right through there? Much, our, much better. Our order was not proper. I think this guy needs to go over this. Oh, what? Um, let me see. Fan motor cover. Ah, uh, so he's gonna sit right in there. Yeah. And of course, it's blue to white and white to blue. It's a bad time to be careless with the screwdriver where you accidentally mar a finish, you torque something down and snap it off, you, um, you know, kind of scratching parts together. Many a young apprentice has marred up a light fixture, much to the homeowner's regret. <clears throat> All right, so I have to spin this nipple on, which is why I loosened the screw, dropped the socket so I could spin the nipple without twisting my wires up. That's the last thing I want to do is a big old fat twist that then shorts, causes a short, and this thing pops as soon as you turn it on. So now it's time to get back down here. Looks like I've got a little further to go. Yeah, one more revolution. Maybe two. I don't think I'm too far. Back it off a half. There it is. All right, now it's going. Now I just need to wiggle it back and forth because there are wires in that nipple. Now you just need to get past them. So a little wiggle action. It's the finesse. It can. I mean, on some fans, it can take two hours to put them up particularly first time around when you just get all the little, the order of operations wrong, or 20, 20th time around. Two screws, gotta get these screws in, or this is where the wiggle's gonna happen. It's right here in the nipple. All right. <clears throat> Make sure our wires are stripped to a length that we can work with, and then we'll take it topside for installation. Does it indicate color to color? Yes. Great. So we're going to use these nice supplied little orange wire nuts. We're going to make them up. The leads are labeled on one side yes. here, and thankfully the colors match. So I'm going to take all, all the little strands and twist them to the right. A nice tight little connection. Match up the ends. Twist them then together. And Rinse and repeat through that process. One thing to be mindful of is the bracket has a notch and so does the socket and they nest right in each other and that's when you're gonna find that nice smooth fit. It'll be gritty until you get it right there. Now we're ready to go topside and hang this thing. It's always a little tedious. I am aligned loosely the hole. I don't want to scar the side of the canopy here. Bring it into view. And there's a way to do this where more your 
Less prefab is done on the ground, more of your work is done in the air. However, that bears its own complications. And since I've got a robust crossfitter on deck, I prefer this method. All right, let's try to get the other one in now. It's gonna be a bit of a spin this way and an adjustment for the canopy. We seceded to the pull apart. And then we'll have to put back together the lesser of evils. Hmm. This side. <coughs> Behaving differently than that side. With the vinyl. Because we're on a seam over here. And let's put a let's put a spacer in that other side. And I'll grab a couple of those. So one thing we're doing is this uh, vinyl is causing things to sit awkwardly. So I've taken some receptacle spacers, just like this. And you can choose your thickness simply by folding them over a number of times, two, three times. So i put a spacer in there. It's gonna help hold that bracket flush because this side of the vinyl will compress, but this side there's a, a seam and it's got a little bit more, it's a little bit more stout. So as I'm talking, Tim's arms are falling off, but that's okay once in a while. Did I dislodge? There we go. All right, got a stout bracket. Let's, then the trick is to hang it back up into the socket, align our grounding conductors. And we're in, nope. <clears throat> so the last step here is taking our safety cable and the chosen mounting point, since we're not in to a framing member, is to wrap it up around one of our box mounting screws. Ooh, up a little higher, Tim, sorry about that. And it's hard to get everything aligned here. All right, we're making up all the grounds together. We've got the box grounded, the bracket is grounded. And a quick comment about the safety cable. We didn't have a nearby joist to use the factory supplied hook into. And so what we did is we secured the safety cable to one of the 1032 mounting screws on the box. I think it's pretty stout. We did hang the fan off it, hung just fine. So that is our grounding connection. Now it's time to slip this big old remote unit. I mean, the remote units really cause some serious congestion in these boxes. The, the number of wires, wire nets, as well as the physical size of the unit itself is beefy. Some fans really benefit from leaving that little black um, receiver tail hanging out. And so, I'm gonna try it without though, because it looks better having it tucked in the canopy. We'll give it a test, and if it's not performing, then we'll hang the unit out. Um, but it's gonna look visibly a little bit better. All right. Tim, the mounting bracket itself, without being worried about the fan at all, we got a little bit of compression, but that's also because we have a little bit of yeah, sag. sag. Well, in hindsight, with this massive canopy, which I was raving about at the beginning, we totally would have probably done our mounting bracket and then slipped our um, knuckle into the ball joint. However, I would still definitely make your remote control connections on the ground before taking it up there. All those little tedious connections can really wear you out doing that over your head. And these screws are wanting to cross thread a little bit. Okay, we're about ready to fire this up before we start putting tools away and doing cleanup. Make sure this baby runs. So we're gonna do our final testing. The breaker's on. Kai Wheats has graciously sent this tester. I'm gonna turn it to voltage. It defaults to DC. So let's change it to AC, and you can see 123.1, we're in good shape. I do like the fact that there's an integrated flashlight. That's like a no-brainer in every tester. However, I've not seen that before, except the Kai Wheats brand. Non-contact voltage detector on the top side here. Broad range of options. Doesn't come with a case, but it does have a kickstand and a mounting hole on the back. So I'm keeping it handy. The, the functionality on this particular unit is, is pretty comfortable. 
just a tick off normal from what you might experience with Klein or Fluke. Um, but it's got a spot. Let's go outside and test our work. Hey, this really worked out nicely and I think it looks great. We've got light off, light on. We've got dimmers, press and hold for three seconds. Man, it's super subtle. Look at that, like super fine tune control, like super fine. And then here's fan on. Boom. Total of five speeds. It's pretty impressive. There's a forward back reverse. Fan off. Again, highly responsive, stops quickly. I got no complaints. Came with batteries and a little wall mount, plus the hardware to mount it on the wall, which that's all pretty typical. But uh, I don't have anything to complain about right now. Mounting was about as, as tedious as most fixtures, and honestly, it's been probably like, shoot, two or three years since I put up a feeling, ceiling fan. No, it's probably been longer than that. Uh, but well done in light. It's time for cleanup. Hey, it's a wrap with the help of Inlight, Kai Wheats, CC. We definitely improved the space. We've got other videos on fixture installation of all type and subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.